Hello everyone and welcome. Good afternoon or good day. Um, if you're in Ghana, it's probably still morning. So good morning. Uh, good to have you here for the first part of our class on the Forex Robots Building class, right? So a very quick one, the class, this particular workshop, so it's more like a workshop because it's not just one class, it's going to span a series of uh, multiple classes, but this will be the first of many, at least for your sets. Um, in this workshop, we're going to be looking at how we can build Forex Robots and uh, how we can opt to optimize our system, basically. So the idea is not about giving you a robot to use. It's about showing you how you can use, how you could build your own uh, bot based on your own strategy, okay? And you can all do this without actually having to understand uh, programming language, without having to, um, to code, right? And so it's going to be interesting. If you have questions, just feel free to ask. I'm going to um, just do a very brief uh, run through on basically what Forex is. So with a show of hands or by typing in uh, T, how many of us here are traders? So if you're a trader in the chat box there, just type in T. And if you're new to trading, maybe you're a beginner, just type in B. And if let's say you're somewhere in between, you are intermediate, you can also type in I. So I know I quickly get a feel for uh, the people in the room. So we are having some T, T, T. Okay, so oh, maybe my I said T sounded like C, uh, but I get that. So there's T, 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 there's I. Okay, so we have some. Uh, I think the room is full of mostly people who um, uh, basically have an understanding about Forex market, which is actually the room I like to, to have, right? So we have, although we do have Dave, who is a beginner. So um, Dave, this class might be a little bit more, but you will enjoy the class. And um, because I'm not going to go into, I'm not going to discuss introduction to the Forex market, but I will show you a resource. If you stay to what, till the end, I'll show you how you can get access to Anzo Trading course. So it's a course on trading i'll take you from beginner to advanced to intermediate to intermediate to advanced to even what i call legend um even this classes on forex robot is also there as well so if um and to be the last say you have no idea that's very fine no problem but stay tuned toward the end of the class you will i'll show you how you can access our trading course um so you can get access to basically a school and a course on formazo that will take you from beginner, basically from the beginning of introduction to Forex market down to the advanced levels, okay? So, but for this particular class, we're going to be focusing on how we can build Forex robots uh, without having to code, okay? Now, um, well, who am I? My name is Nana Obina Alexander. I am the head market analyst and a senior educator, a head educator basically here at Anzu Capital. I am a professional Forex trader. So I've been trading the market for about nine years, started trading back in 2015. And I used to be the head market analyst and the educator at Gemini Capital Markets, uh, IV Market, which is now Star Trader. Um, so I basically have a good number of experience in this field. And this is basically Forex is my predominant source of income. Now, so sometimes I'm called the FX Jedi. So you can follow me on socials. It's FX Jedi on Instagram and I think also on Twitter. Now, so here's what we'll be talking about today. We're going to be looking at trade automation, why it's important. Why is it so if you even even if you don't know anything about forex trading, you've probably heard something about forex robots, right? It's so popular, everybody seems to have one or everybody seems to be selling one, right? Now I'll, I'll we'll talk about why forex robots um basically uh are, basically why they are trending now and why they some of the advantages. I'll also discuss some of the disadvantage. And then I'll show you how we can get things done um, with building Forex robots without coding and some of the best practices as regards what I do when I'm looking to build bots with this particular system, right? So uh, mind you, I do understand coding. I do know how to code. Uh, I used to build my bots like that, but not, now not so much um, anymore. I use basically the system I'll be showing you to do that, okay? And uh, so for those of you who are extremely fresh, I'm just going to spend about one minute talking about what Forex is. So, um, for the traders, don't worry, I won't spend more than two minutes on this part. So what exactly is Forex? The simplest way I can explain it is it's a large market, it's a global financial market that enables us to trade instruments against each other. So mostly you look at currencies or commodities like gold or crude oil, or even stocks. You know, you can trade the share prices of Tesla and Google 
you could trade all of these things. And basically, anything that has price and that moves over time, we look to profit from the fluctuation in price, right? There's an in-depth course or um, you know, training videos on this for those of you who are new to trading. But what we try to do as forex trader is take advantage of the flux or the fluctuations in price by looking to buy or sell with the hope that we will speculate the right direction. So we are speculative traders basically because we don't know exactly where price will go, but we study price action or study the market or have some way of analyzing price to make decision as to whether we want to buy or sell. Okay. So, well, that's the, that's the brief for the fastest introduction to the Forex market I could give you. There's an in-depth course that I'll show you later on how and how you can assess that. And the market, the Forex market is very, very huge. It is the largest financial market in the world. Currently, it has an estimated daily trading volume of about $7 trillion. Now, when you compare that to all the other financial markets, it is insignificant. It's very, very small compared to it. So this liquidity, therefore, is an advantage that we have as traders. And those of you who are traders, you bear me witness when I say that you can make a lot of money trading the Forex market. Sure, you can lose a lot of money as well, but you can, you know, it's ridiculous the amount of money you can make trading in the financial market when you compare that to any other business sector. So it's, a one, it's one skill set that you should be looking into to, to basically add to your arsenals or to your diverse source of income, you know, especially in, in Africa or this part of Africa that we live in. We need multiple strong sources of income. Now, we'll now be diving over to Forex robots, which is actually why we're here, uh, and look at what it's about, why it's better in some ways to have some sort of automated system and some of the disadvantage that can come with it. Now, trading robots, why important? The, the fact is, we all want to be able to make money while we sleep, right? So, you know, just sit down and cross your legs and sit in a bit, uh, you know, sit down in a beach in, in, in seashells and just sip your coconut water. However, um, the market is always on the move. So the market is open 24 hours a day, five and a half days a week. And there's opportunity in the markets at you know varying source, uh, varying points in the market. Right at all points in the market, there's at every single time when the market is open, um, you can assess the market. You can also trade Bitcoin and cryptos within the during the weekends as well. But the thing is, you can't physically watch the chat and try to analyze or spot every single trading decision or every single opportunity. So mind you, as a trader, you have an ideal scenario, right? So I don't care whether you're a price action trader or you're an indicator trader. As a trader, you have an ideal scenario. So what I mean by that is what you look for, right? What you look for in order for um, in order for you to place a buying or a selling action, okay? So I'm just getting a question now from Chuck saying, I need to talk a little bit about the company and the capital and all of those. Um, okay, so I played a video earlier in the, okay, I'm sure you probably just come in, came in. I, there was a video earlier explaining um, a little bit about Anzu Capital. So I'm just going to um, just discuss that very briefly. I think I should have also started with that as well. So Anzu Capital, we are a Forex broker. We are a tier one regulated Forex broker. So we have regulations in the UK. We have regulations, in, we're regulated in Australia, in Belize, in Singapore. Now, we um, are the only, now, emphasis there on only 100% non dealing index broker, right? So what that means, basically, I'm not going to go into detail explaining that a lot, um, but what that means is you are trading direct liquidity when you trade on Anzo's platform. Now, I'm sure some of you who are traders would uh, bear me witness that there are some platforms that will tell you um, that you can really use a particular system of trading or you can't trade the news or you can't trade with the setting robot. There are most platforms would discourage some sort of trading, let's say high frequency trading, uh, because they are trading a deal index system. Now in those models, the broker is the other, takes the other side of your trade. So basically when you make profits, um, it's a loss to the, to the platform. And then when you make losses, it's a gain because, well, the idea is, um, you know, most traders lose. You all, we all know this. The majority of traders lose, and so the deal index operational model, um, the it's it's basically such that when you lose, it's 
down to the broker's gain. And when you gain, it's basically stealing from, from the broker. Now, your trades are not exactly passed to the liquidity providers as it should be. Now, here's the thing about this sort of system. It is not an illegal business model. So it's not like they are doing committing fraud or anything, right? It's not an illegal business model. But you can see the conflict of interest with those sort of operations because, well, because it's your loss is their gain and their gains is their loss. So you start to see things like um, basically market manipulations. Not, or not, it's not like it's rampant, but you you find situations where there are constant recruits, slippages on the platform. Now, on Anzo Capital, you wouldn't find recruits or slippages. You know, you'd almost never find those. You might find some slippages during high volatility news, but you would never find recruits or slippages on the platform because you're trading direct liquidity, which is why, you know, um, if you are a trader, and if you, especially if you're even looking to trade using bots, you want to trade on the system, the Anzo Capital platform. Now, our spreads are also very, very tight. You know, our spreads on EURUSD, on ECN accounts like zero points. Uh, one, our STP account also very, very low as well. And um, our commissions are one of the smallest in terms of its commissions on e ECN's account are also really, really small. So enabling you to keep back most of the profits you make. And then if you're a partner like an IB or so, um, you would um, benefit a lot with trading with Anzo Capital and having your client trade on the platform because you would earn much more. Okay, so that's a very, very quick intro. As to Anzo, there's also a video on that. There's also a training that basically covers why you should trade with Anzo Capital, okay? Now, um, okay, so um, somebody said something there. I, I don't want to take questions now. So maybe you leave your questions still just after we're done. Okay, so we don't spend much time here. I'll come back to your question there. Chooks for your wrong. I'll uh, be glad it's actually the brokers. Okay, so now trading bots, right? Trading bots um, or trading robots are quite valuable, quite um, uh, frequent, quite useful now because as humans and as traders, you know that emotions are one of the things that are not, not good at all for our trading. So if you trade with emotions, if you want to be a successful trader, then you need to almost become a robot in the sense that you're not emotionally attached to profits or to losses. So when you take losses, it's part of the game. And when you make profits, it's also part of the game. You don't get overly excited about profits or get overly dejected because of losses. Now, as humans, it's very difficult to have this, right? You need it, it needs it to take you years of experience to become so disciplined uh, in following your system. There's also the, the also the the challenge with um, uh, trading sometimes where you have a system, so you have rules that you want to wait for. Let's say if you're trading based on indicator and you are waiting for social and social indicators something to happen or price to do certain things or you're looking for price action candlesticks. And then you become impatient to wait for the candlestick or the indicator to set up properly and you get into positions. Now, at the end of the day, you might end up losing that rate. But you see that the reason you lost that, um, you, you made that loss or made a stupid decision was because of emotions, right? The fear of missing out, you know, or the fear of making a loss. So those fears can be alleviated by using a bot. So what we do, or what a forex robot essentially is, is it takes, we would impute our logic. So basically we'll give it instructions as to what we are looking for. Oh, I want to buy if so, so, and so, and so meets, right? So if this condition and that condition and this condition align, place a buy, put a stop loss here, put a take profit there. Otherwise, if this condition and that condition aligns, place a sell, take profit at this point, take stop loss at this point. Now, if you um, if you if you put imputed your logic and you plug it into your chat, so you plug in your EA or your expert advisor into your chat. Well, as long as there's as long as there is an internet connection on that, let's say you're using a VPS, so you should be fine. Anytime those conditions are met, the EA would execute a trade regardless of anything else. So it takes away the emotion and just simply executes decisions that you've imputed into it. So now you now see, so that's the advantage. But here is where the disadvantage lies. Forex markets can be very, very dynamic. Sometimes the market is ranging, sometimes the market is trending. And since it's a bot, it is garbage in, garbage out. So it's basically what you impute into it is the result you get out of it, right? So if you put, if your logic is sound and it's profitable and it's applied in the correct market condition, well, to make you money. Otherwise, probably will lose you money. That's why you see, you know, 
you know, 90%, probably 95% of all the trading robots will probably blow your account at some points, right? Because, because of a number of factors. One of them is, let's say it is scalping robots. That means to work well, it work best in the ranging markets. What happens when the market suddenly changes and begins to trend? It will still try to do the same thing because the logic is scalping and, you know, it might end up taking a lot of losses. Sometimes people tend to martingale. It can help uh, once in a while, but sometimes the market will just continue to move in, you, in that direction against you and cause you to lose your funds. But that same martingale principle or style probably works very well in a, in a ranging market. So the disadvantage lies in the logic behind it. So it's all down to the logic and how you apply it in the right market condition. Okay, so let's, let's push forward. We'll spend quite a number of time here. Now, um, how is it done in terms of what I'm trying to tell you here? Before now, you, you probably need to understand how to build for, in order to build for robots, you need to understand how to code and how to program using the MQL4 slash MQL5 language. Um, however, I'm going to be showing you a system where you can take advantage of a web-based platform that can enable you to basically build um, sophisticated EAs without actually having to code. It's, elite, it's actually quite complex, but it's definitely less complex than um, coding uh, as well. Now, I always like to use analogies. Now, when it comes to making or building a forex robot or trading in general, I like to think about it like, you know, a recipe. So imagine you're trying to bake a cake. Every single cake has their own specific recipe. Now, if you want to get the right sort of cake or the right sort of outcome, then you need to follow the clear recipe and use the ingredients at the proper time in the proper proportion. So take, for example, you're trying to make chocolate cake, right? And let's say the ingredients contains like 10 or 12 ingredients. Now, there's flour, there's chocolates or chocolate flavor, there's milk, there's butter, there's sugar, you have all of those things. Now, all of those different ingredients are different, different conditions. Now, the recipe would say something like, mix two cups of flour with half cup of water, right? And then you mix it, and then you say you're probably supposed to mix it to a certain texture, and then you add your butter, probably you add your egg, and then you mix further, and then you add your chocolate and all of those things. So you see that even though, even if you have the right recipe, if you don't put them in the right order and in the right manner, you probably will not get the results. That is the chocolate cake that you're looking for. It probably will not turn out as well as you wanted it to. So it will be a situation of what I ordered versus what I got, right? So in the same manner, just like in baking a cake or in cooking any particular meal or delicacy you like, there's a recipe. And if you follow it properly, you get the result. When you're looking to build a Forex robot, whether you're looking to build it via coding it, or you're looking to build it via, um, you know, using the system, the, the FX Dreamer, I'll be showing you in just a bit. You need to understand that you want to, you know, have a recipe and then explain basically the simpler, the clearer and the simpler you make the instruction, the better your results or the box would work. Okay, so I'm going to show you that in a minute, right? Now, um, basically, here is just saying, I'll be showing you how you can view those robots without having to code, and all of this is provided to you courtesy of Anzo Capital. Now, personally, if, you know, outside Anzo Capital, and you say you want me to teach you how to trade or how to do anything, you probably at least have to pay me $1,000. But well, and the only criteria Anzo is acting from you is create an account. If, um, for you to be here, actually, you needed to create an account. Now, um, in order to assess for that classes on all of this, you need to at least fund your account and trade with the platform. I think that's a fair bargain. Uh, you're not paying for it. Uh, you just trade on the platform. And I think that's win-win for everyone, okay? So um, remember, I'll come back to your questions uh, so that we can look. Now, don't worry, in the lifetime of this, for this particular training, we're going to be beginning, a, we're going to build our first robot and we're going to test it together live here, okay? Um, okay, so let's proceed. So here is um, basically what I like to call the process, right? Something I like to, when I'm looking to build any EA, now it can be sophisticated, it could be a very sophisticated um, robot, it could be a not so sophisticated robot, but following this process, like outlining the things you need um, in this manner would enable you to, to basically um, 
have a have it have a better time or an easier time so you don't get scattered all over the place especially once you now start building complex robots with lots of moving parts okay now um yeah let's let's look at some of the things that i want i always tend to consider now the process when in this in this particular area here there's certain things i always like to define or state out when i'm looking to build a bot now the first one is what you see here that i call what would trigger your buying of certain actions let's make that red what would trigger your buying of certain actions so you want to define what would trigger what what conditions needs to be met for you to Place a buy or place a sell. Now, a very quick one. How many of us here are in, uh, price action traders? That means you look at price and you make decisions to buy or sell based on price action. And then how many of us are indicator-based traders? So if you're a price action trader, just type in P in the chat box there. And if you're an indicator trader, just type in I, right? Now, there's no... Um, over the years with my experience, right, in trading, there's no, there's no really best one. Some of us are price. I've seen very profitable price action style traders. I've seen very profitable indicator based traders. I've seen some traders who use a mixture of both. Maybe maybe it could be smart money concept. You can be profitable trading. Almost every system can be profitable, but you have to apply that system in the right market condition, and you have to follow your rules, right? So on my trade on my YouTube channel, I have a a, train, a, a video there on you know plannings and why it's important. Okay. Um, somebody says they can't hear anything. I think it's your device because other people seem to hear me just well. So we have some price action trader. We also have some indicator traders in the room. So that's also very good. Now I'm going to um because of this diverse mix here, during the lifetime of this workshop, we're going to be building two different types of bots. So one of them will be solely based on indicator. And the other one would incorporate a little bit of price action. Okay, the idea is so that you can understand how to um, to 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 approach building robots, irrespective of the style of um, robots you're looking to build. Remember, the goal of this course or this workshop is not about Anzo giving you a forex robot. Anzo Capital would not give you do, do not trade for client and does not give out robot or anything of the nature. Your uh, brokers are not supposed to do that because. Well, your license only covers um, providing a platform to trade. However, can provide you education so that you can even become an, a better trader. Now, whether you're a price action trader or you're an indicator trader, you have a reason for buying or a reason for selling. So, for example, right? Let's let's take let's say you're an indicator based trader, right? And you trade moving averages, right? So you look at the moving averages and you, you try to trade when the market crosses over the moving average, or maybe you trade, um, you know, um, RSI's or MACD's, your divergent trader, and you look for divergence in the markets, right? Now, the point there is, the reason you look to get involved in the trade is because an indicator is doing a certain thing. So for instance, let's say the market is bullish, right? So the market is making higher highs and higher lows, right? In this sort of market condition, if you have the moving average, for instance, it will probably be something like this, below price. Now, if you incorporate two moving averages, right? So let's say uh, with two different periods, let's say one of them is a 20 period moving average and the other is a 50 period moving average, they will stay something like this, right? Now, at some point, because no trend continues forever, let's say this market breaks down okay, so, and begins to go the other way, you would find that there will probably be a crossover of the moving average. Now, so for traders who look to trade this sort of system, right, the reason for their buying or selling action is based on the crossover of the moving average. So you understand what I mean by what would trigger your buying or selling action. Now, another sort of system would be, so let's say, you, you look to trade from levels of resistance or support, and then you look for confirmations in form of candlestick setups, right? But let's say you're an indicator, you're a price action trader, and price is approaching a level that you're interested in. And then you find rejection candlestick, let's say a bullish, a bearish pin bar, right? Now, forgive my drawing. Now, let's assume this is a bearish pin bar, and based on your own rules for trading, uh, once you have this kind of setup from a level you're interested in, maybe you look to sell. Right? Well, 
what is the reason you're going to look to sell here? The confirm it's going to be, well, the pin bar or the price action. So you've defined what would trigger your buying or selling action. Now it could be a pin bar, it could be an engulfing bar, it could be any other setups that you look to trade. I'm just giving examples, right? So once you define, at least based on the EA you're looking to build, what would um what would trigger your buying or selling action? Stitch that down, you've gotten your first part. So you you've um, detailed your first part. Okay, I look to buy when the 10 period moving average cross above the 20 period moving average. Oh, and I look to sell when the 10 period moving average crosses below the 20 period moving average. That's your trigger. Or I look to buy when I get a bullish spin bar from a level of uh, I'm interested in, or a bullish spin bar or maybe an engulfing candle. Uh, and then I look to sell when I get so, 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 and so. So you get that. Now the next point will be, how do you enter the trade based on your system? Now, for someone who is looking to trade, let's say this pin bar, for instance, you might your rules might be okay at the close of the candle. When the candle closes, I would enter immediately selling. It could also be that when the candle closes, I'll wait for a retest of the fifty percent Fibonacci retracement area, or you know, a sixty one point eight Fibonacci retracement of that area, and then I'll look to sell. So whatever it is, however it is, you look to enter your trades is the second point here that is stated here. Um, is the second point stated here as to what to, how would you enter the trade? Somebody asks there about the news, right? Now that is entirely up to you, right? Uh, remember, uh, there's no except you except you except you build an AI that has machine learning and is able to optimize and continue to figure market conditions and and basically change parameters or change characteristics between those areas. You it would have to do some work. So just because it's a Forex robot, you build the bot, doesn't mean you don't go back, you don't, you just hands free, it's hands free. You still need to, at some point, maybe turn off the robot or turn it on. Let's say you have a scalping EE, an EE that works best in a ranging market. Now, if you notice that the market is becoming, the, the trend is about to change and it's not about to explode, I think you'd be best, you'd be better off just turning off the EE until the market condition favors the EE. Right. So let's say you have an EE, your your EE or your robot running, and the news is about to 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 hit. You might want to, you know, it's depending on what sort of system you build, basically, right? If it's not friendly to the news, then during the news period, well, you can just pause it, and then after the news, you begin it again. So it's entirely up to you. Okay. So once you've defined how you enter the trade based on your system, the next point will be how you exit the trade based on your system. Now, there are two forms of exits. There's the exit when you're correct, which is what we call stake profits. That's the one we all like to see. And there's also the exit when you're wrong, which is what we call stop loss. That's the one we don't necessarily like to see. However, both of them are very, very, very important if you're going to, um, you know, very important losses are part of the game. So you need to define based on your system, how you exit the trade. Now for some, let's say this price action system, your exit parameter might be, okay, I'll place my stop loss at the, you know, at the, uh, if you're selling uh, and it's a pin bar, place my stop loss five pips above the pin bar. And then my target, your TP can be two to one or three to one, entirely up to you, right? It can also be, I'll place my stop loss 20 pips and I'll place my take profit 40 pips. Whatever the case, um, it's remember, you're not just build, you're not, you don't just, you don't start by building a robot, you start by having a strategy. So by you have a strategy, you've tested a strategy, you like the way it trades, you've back tested it, you've probably forward tested it, trading it live. And then you like this strategy. And then you say, okay, how can I automate it? So you take that strategy and you bring it to automation. You don't come and say, I want to build a trading robot then what strategy am I going to, you know? It's the strategy first approach, where you have the strategy that you've tested and you're comfortable with, and then you're trying to build a bot to do just that for you. And then the last point, which is um, optional, is how do you manage the trade, which is where you have things like trailing stops and, you know, break even and all of those things, right? So once you have this sort of blueprint, it kind of enables you to, um, to have a clear plan right? A clear plan as to what you're trying to accomplish. Now, it's very, very important. It's like, you know, I always tend to say it's like building a house. You don't just say, I want a two-story building, you know, um, six-bedroom apartment, whatever. Uh, and then you just tell the builder, start building. 
what you do is you go to an architect, they draw out the plan, you take the plan, you give it to the civil engineer, they build it for you based on the plan. That's the same kind of approach we want to have here. So um, like I mentioned during the lifetime of this workshop, we're going to be creating two EAs. The first type of EA, the first EA would be a, an indicator-based um, robot. It's, a, it's going to be an, a robot that takes advantage of the moving average. So we're going to look at the moving average and use it to make trading decisions as to how we buy and how we sell, and then we'll see how we build that together. And then the next uh, EA we'll be building will be based on price action pattern. And like I mentioned, the idea is, so you have, you, you have basically, you have an idea as to how to approach irrespective of the style of um, bots you're looking to build, okay? Now, so what we're going, what we're going to do now is we're going, I'm going to take you over to the, I'm going to, um, you know, I've been talking about how we build E without coding, how we build E without coding. So I'll show you how the platform, how you can assess it, and also um, we will build our first spot together. So let's jump, let's um, hop over streets to that. Okay, so um, before now, you need to be able to code on the MQL4 or MQL5 language. You can all easily assess that from your, so once you install the MT4 or the MT5 on your desktop, right, on your laptop, once you install it, you would have, there's a, um, it's always, it usually comes with a uh, meta editor, right? So meta editor. That meta editor, you can put, it's the, the language, the meta editor language or the meta code language is very related to the C++. It kind of looks like C++. So you can actually have code there. Um, but we're not going to be doing that. Another thing is when you build your bot here, you can actually, you know, Take it to the meta editor, look at the codes, you know, and basically understand uh, if you if you're into coding, you can even um, um, you know optimize it from there as well, right? But we're not going to be doing any coding related really thing, right? Now the platform that I'm going to be showing you that we're going to be using to build our bots going forward is called the FX Dreamer. So that's F X D R e e m -E .com. So fxdreamer.com, it's a web-based platform that, in, that can enable you to build web packages, that can enable you to build for, it's specifically designed for helping you build Forex robots either on the MT4 or the MT5. So you don't need to learn how to do it on the MT4 and then learn how to do it on the MT5. You can just select the platform you want to build for and then build it that. Now it's, um, it's paid for, you do have to uh, pay for it, but it's actually quite cheap. I think it's about 50 or 60 dollars um, for a three month subscription or something of the nature. So you can, it's relatively, it's relatively cheap. So you can build your project there and then download the project and run it on your MT4. So we're going to be building our first robots and then we're going to be um, optimizing, we're going to be uh, running it or testing it, uh, test running it on our MT4 to see how it, but now the goal is not whether to see if it makes us money. The goal is to see if it does what we actually wanted it to do. Okay, like that's clear. Now, like I mentioned, I always tend to, I always like to be very, very plain, like in terms of very clear, have clear rules and clear. Um, so I usually tend to have a Google doc file for every particular year I build, right? And then I also tend to build a flow chart. This enables, it kind of like having an architectural plan and then giving that plan to the builder. With the right architectural plan, you know, you can give it to the builder and the builder will just, it's easier for them to follow the instructions that is there. All right, so um, just to save time, I already um, just quickly um, wrote out the, 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 the plan of what we are trying to do. That's our uh, moving average crossover system. Okay, let me look this, I don't know why it's not written. So our moving average crossover system, it's basically what it contains is what are we trying to do, right? what would trigger our buying or selling action, and then how do we exit our positions, right? So remember, if you remember our slide, uh, this slide, we said the first point is, what would trigger our buying or selling action, okay? So if we go over to, to our doc file here, you see I already had this written out here. So I just named it exponential, EMA stands for exponential moving average, so exponential moving average crossover strategy. That's the name of the strategy, okay? Now, what do we require? What are the requirements? So remember our baking example. You want to bake a cake, you would list out the recipe, the, um, what they call it, what they call those things, the, what you need, the items you need, so flour, butter, sugar, and all of those things. So what are the requirements? Well, since it's just based on the moving average, we are looking at two moving average. So we need two moving averages, right? Uh, two exponential moving average. The first one, you know, it can be any value, right? So remember, 
let's say you've tested, you've been looking at Euro USD on the one minute chart or on the one hour chart, and you've noticed that the five period moving average works very well, or the 20 period moving average works very well. So you already have a system that, okay, this works well on this time frame, on this instrument or something like so. And then you, you, you list, state out the requirements, what you need to do um, to see in order to buy or in order to sell. Now, this same principle should apply whether you are looking to buy or whether you're trading manually or you're trading using a bot. Have clear rules and specific instructions you follow and then follow those instructions and those rules at all times. You know That's the only way you can be consistently profitable in this market. So we're going to be using two moving averages, the um, five, I think we're going to just use the 10 period moving average. So let's use 10 period moving average and the 20 period moving average, right? Now, the 10 period moving average, I would refer to sometimes as the fast moving average because it's quite faster. So basically what I mean is, okay, I think I can show you here, right? For those of you who don't understand what moving averages are, right? The moving average is an indicator. It's actually a lagging indicator that takes the average, right? The average of price within a specific period calculates it together and plots it on the chart, right? So as price moves, it also moves with price. So basically what that means is it's, it's taking the mean. So if you did, remember your math example, you did mean deviation. It's taking the mean of the specific range in the chart and then giving you a value, okay? Uh, so let me just quickly load up the charts and to show you um, quickly here an example. Okay, so um, yeah, I have here, if you would just load up properly. Okay, meanwhile, while we're having this question, so far, I hope uh, I hope we're enjoying the class. I hope it's we're following and I hope it's making sense. Are we are we enjoying the class? Is it are we? I know we've not started doing anything just yet, but don't worry, we would. Okay. Okay, Chuxi is very interesting. Good, good, good. Okay, so um, I'm sure other people feel, I hope at least other people feel the same way as well, that it is interesting. So now let's look at, um, let me just load the chart for EURUSD. Right, so we have this chart for EURUSD, although this is the daily chart. Now you can see, I hope you can see this clearly as well. Okay, um, you can see that there is a red and a blue line that is below price. Let me see if I can zoom in. Right, so you can see those lines, right? So those are the moving average. This, this is this line here and this line here, right? This red and green one are prices. These are the candles, right? So you can see this. Those of you who are not really traders, those are the people I'm quite explaining this for. For the traders, you already see the moving average on our chart here, right? Now, okay, let me make it thicker. No, not necessarily, it's, it's fine, right? Now, so here's the thing. The, the idea um, the idea is in a bullish market, the price um, the moving averages tend to stay below price. So you can see all this period why price was um, bullish. So we know a bullish market has price making higher highs and higher lows. The moving average stays below price. And in the bearish market, the moving average stays above price. So let's actually look at the one hour chart uh, because this would um, probably show that even better right so but we get the idea now in the bearish market or when the market is bearish moving average stays above price and when the market is bullish you see the moving average stays below price so now the question is can we use the moving average crossover as a reason to buy or sell well take for example right look at this period here all right let me draw my screen so yeah look at this point here you can see that the market is bearish making lower lows and lower highs but at some point, the market became bullish and started making higher highs and higher lows. But notice what happened. When the market was bearish, you can see that the moving averages, this red and the blue line, when it was bearish, the red line, which is the fast, fast period, uh, the fast moving average, in this case, the 10 EMA, was below the 20 EMA. So the 10 EMA was below the 20 EMA. And it stayed that way until this point where the 10 EMA crossed above the 20 EMA, right? So there was a crossover here, right? Even though, yeah, this is where price began to move. Remember I said this is a lagging indicator, but this is where the moving average caught up with price. 
And then we have the crossover here. Now, at this point, the 10 period moving average crossed above the 20 period moving average. So what we're trying to do is build a bot that would take into consideration the crossovers of the moving average and use that as a reason to buy or sell. So note that it's not considering price movement. It's not considering any other thing. It's just looking at the indicators and using those indicators as a reason to buy or sell. So now we have our, we have our rules. So first of all, we, we stated our requirements. We need our EMA, the 10 EMA and the 20 EMA. Then we said we would look to buy when the, okay, this should be 10, when the 10 EMA cross above the 20 EMA. I that will be our trigger for buying. And then we'll look to sell when the 10 EMA cross below the 20 EMA. Okay, now we'll say, um, so let's, let me go back to our slide again, just so that we can see. We decided, we'll just um, pointed out what would trigger our buying or selling action, which is the crossovers of the moving average. Next point will be, how do we enter the trade? Well, if we go back to our chat here, I would say we wait for the candle to close. So for instance, right, we want to, we want to um, buy or sell based on the moving average, but we want to wait for the candle to close. So for instance, let me take this candle for, instance, for example, um, this particular candle, let me draw. So this particular candle here, if you drag out, yeah this red candle, right? Now, for those of you who are traders, you would um, at least understand this. Let me go back there, right? Imagine what would have been happening to this moving average by the time this, this red candle here, this red candle, by the time the week, you know, this is, since this is a one hour chart, there was some point where the price was as high as this, it was this high, right? The moving average, this red one would have almost be crossing above the blue one. But by the time the candle closes, price ended up closing back down here. So what we want to do is we want to use the close of the candle. So we don't want to take the crossover of the moving average when the market is live. So we want to wait for that candle to close. If at any point, at any candle where the moving average crossover, at the close of any candle where the moving average crossover, that is where it will take the buy or sell action. So in this case, you can see here, this here is where the crossover happened, right? This candle, this big red candle. But the buying action would not would be after the close of this candle because as, as at the close of this candle that this crossover will be confirmed, okay? So that means we will buy at the open of the next candle, okay? So I hope you get that. The same condition is applied for the, um, uh, what do you call it, for the selling, um, condition, we'll just flip it over the other way. So we've answered the second point here, which is what would trigger, uh, what would trigger our selling or, or how do we enter the trade? So we know what will trigger our buying and selling action. The next point is how do we enter the trade? We wait for the close of the candle. The candle that closes and the moving average has crossed over will enter a trade at that position. And then the next point would be how do we exist the trade based on our system? Okay, so how do we do that? Well, there are a number of ways you can do that. But for this example, for this particular um, um, EE we're going to build here, we're, going to, we're just going to impute a hard stop, a hard coded stop loss and take profit. So if the crossover happened, what we'll do is we'll set our stop loss to 30 pips and set our take profits to 60 pips, right? So well, two to one risk to reward ratio. So immediately the crossover happens, it will take a trade. Our risk will be 30 pips, our target will be 60 pips, okay? so. You see what we're doing here. Slowly, we are building up our logic or the logic for our EA. So we've answered what we need, our requirements. The next point is how will we buy? How will we decide on how to buy or sell? And then how do we exit our trade? Now, another point you can also add to this: what time frame would this be added on? So, but you don't necessarily need to add that because the EA will run on the time frame that you applied on the chart. Okay. So now we have that. Usually. Um, for what I want, something I, I usually tend to do is I draw this collector framework of what I want to do. So those of you who understand flow charts, right? Uh, you probably would appreciate this. So with the flow chart, especially once you're looking to build complex EAs, you know, if you have a flow chart, it kind of makes it, um, it kind of gives you a very clear blueprint as to what you're looking at 
uh, what you're looking for is like an architectural plan, right? And then you can now, the builder can then use that architectural plan to do the construction, okay? So I just built a flow chart that just, that will just explain, uh, basically that will just, um, uh, what you call it, that will just detail what I'm trying to do. So if you see here, I already have this build um, drawn out already. So you can see what it says. It's it's like a, a top-down, right? So a top-down analysis where you're like, okay, if this happens, do this. If this happens, go to this side. Otherwise, go to this side, right? So the first thing we want to do is check that there are no open trades because what we don't want is we don't want our EA taking trades indiscriminately. So we want the EA or the robots to take notes of the current or trades that it's already, that it has already executed and then decide to do something about them, okay? So that's what we have here. Check if any EA trade is open. That means if this particular EA has any trade. Now you can have multiple EAs and they'll have their own multiple checks. So if there are no open trades, so you can see this is our decision table here. If there are no open trades, it will go to what this side. Otherwise, it would do nothing. You can see that, okay? Now, if there are no open trades, what we want you to do is to check the 10 period and the 20 period exponential moving average, okay? Now, if it, what is it checking? It will first ask itself, has the 10 period exponential moving average crossed above the 20 period exponential moving average? Remember, it's taking into consideration the close of the candle. If the answer is yes, it will use that as a reason to open it by. Otherwise, it will check if the 10 period moving average has crossed below the 20 period moving average, and if the answer is yes, it will use that as a reason to open itself. If the answer is no, and both, and both cases, it will also do nothing, okay? So now let's go over to the effect dreamer and let's see how we do this actually. Now, this effect dreamer is very, um, very, I actually quite like the interface. You have on your left-hand side here, what I like to call functions, right? I don't exactly know what you call them, but you could call them functions. I call them, they are variable functions. You can just drag and drop and use them. Now you want, on this event tab here, you need this to say on tick, right? So that means on every tick in the chat, the EA will check. So at every tick, it will check. At every tick, it will check, right? Um, then, so what we want to do is, how do we make this up? How do we, how do we um, build out this? So the first point is we want to check if there are any open trades, right? Now on that here, so look here, you see check trade other counts, right? Check trades and other count. You see something here that says no trade. Just, so it's a drag and drop setup. So you just drag and drop a, any particular logic or any particular function you want to use. And this is the beautiful part. All of these are coded and embedded. But instead of having to work with the code, you just have to work with the, um, you know, drag and drop features and then um, edit it or modify it to, to suit your particular need, okay? So you can see we have here no trade, right? So what this means is if there are no trades, what I can do, if you can right click on it, you click on edit title, you can edit the title. Now editing the title doesn't necessarily do anything to the function. It just helps you, especially when you come back and you're looking at your, basically your, your project, you need to know what exactly you are trying to, what, 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 what exactly is in that function. So here we'll just name it no trade, right? And we'll say buy or sell. That means if there are no trades, both buy or sell, then this function will be run. So you can double click on it. So you can see, I just double clicked on this to bring out this area here. You can modify, modify this to say, only buys or only sell, but we we'll leave it at either buy or sell, right? So we'll click on update. So basically, if there are no trades, then this would run. So what, what do we want to happen if there are no trades? Let's go back to our flow chart. If there are no trades, that means this area, remember if there are trades, it will do nothing. But if there are no trades, this area, it will check what? We want to check the moving averages, the 10 period moving average and the 20 period moving average. And here is the condition for buy. So let us, states, if there are no trade, let it check the condition for buy and let it also check the condition for sell, okay? Now, on that here, you will see condition section. So there's a condition um, section here, just drag out, drag and drop it out. So we have a condition parameter here and you can move it around just, I always like to. So what I'll do is here, we would name our buy condition. So what is our buy condition? Back to our flow chart here. Well, if the 10 period exponential moving average crosses above the 20 period exponential moving average, then we want to execute a buy, right? So how do we set that condition? 
Now I'm just going to right click, select edit title and just name this by condition. So we know what we're doing in there, right? Now you double click on it, it will open up the dialog box so you can modify the parameters that you have there. Now you can see there's indicator, there's, you know, under, there are several things you can con um, look. So if you, if you think about it, what does condition mean? It, just, it means you're saying, if, look at this, right? And look at that. If this and this happens or compare this to this, if the answer is this, then make a particular action. Okay, so we're using indicators. Now, if we're looking at maybe we're trying to look at candlestick setup, we can be we can um, build our EA to look at buys or, or bullish candles or bullish pin bars or stuff like that. So we'll be dealing with the candles. Okay, but we're looking at indicators, so just click on indicator. What indicators are we looking at? You see, there are a number of indicators here: MACD, RSI, Fractal, you know, uh, the MFI and all, but we're looking for our uh, moving average, okay? So you can see, so we're comparing the left-hand side to the right-hand side. As you can see here, there's a left-hand side. There's also a right-hand side. Now, what does our rule say? We're looking at if the 10 period exponential moving average cross above the 20 period exponential moving average, then we want to buy. So here it says MA period. We're just going to make this say, edit this and put 10. Now there's a checkbox by the side of it. If you tick on that checkbox, it will make this value modifiable when you're running your EA, okay? Now, what type of moving average are we looking at? We don't want the simple moving average. We want the exponential moving average. So we'll click on exponential. And then under more settings, what I want you to do is put candle ID to one. Now, what does that mean? Well, here's the way MT4, the MT4 looks at the chart, right? Each candle has an ID, but here's the, um, here's the thing. The first candle, that's the current candle, that's this one that we're looking at here. Um, at in any in every single time frame, right? The current candle is has a candle ID of zero. Now this is a one hour chart. So this particular candle that is from remember this is life price. This particular candle has an ID of zero. The one next to it by the left has an ID of one. The next one has an ID of two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. So this current candle has an ID of zero. This one to the left has an ID of one. Now, remember, we want to look at the moving average at the close of the candle. That means at the close, if let's say this moving average crossover here is crossing over already, right? Well, we want this candle to close. That means by the time the next candle starts, the next candle will have an ID of zero and this one will have an ID of one. That is why we're looking, that is why we here, we put in, candle ID one. That means we're looking at the just closed candle. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So here we said, this is the moving average. We're looking at the exponential moving average. We're looking at the just recently closed candle. We're comparing the 10 period moving average towards the 20 period moving average. How are we comparing it? If the 10 period moving average cross above. Now here, if you click on this, you would see X greater than, X less than, X equal to, you know. So what is X greater than means if it crosses, greater than or if it crosses above, okay? So if, if it crosses above, then we want to buy. So we use X greater than. What are we comparing? Well, we're comparing the 20 period moving average. So we can just check this box. Make sure we're looking at the exponential moving average on that more setting also set candle ID to one, okay? And then you're done. You click on updates. So what we just did now is we just defined the buy condition. Now we connect these dots, this lower um, one down to the top of this one, right? So what this means is if there are no trades, it will check the buy condition. If the buy condition is met, what do we want to do? Well, we want to buy. So we just go to buy, click on drag this buy now, right? We have our buy now tab. Now, this is where we now impute our exit parameters, okay? So we click on buy now, double click on it. Now here you would see, it says fixed volume. That's what lot size you wanted to execute it on. You can set it to one lot. You can set it to anything. So we're just going to set it to 0 0.1, uh, basically 0 point, let's set it 0 0.2 lots, okay? Now, um, how about our stop loss and take profits? Well, we can use um, several things, but we'll just set it to fixed stop loss and fixed take profits. Our stop loss, we said we're going to use the stop loss of 30 pips and we're going to use the take profit of 60 pips. Okay, so stop loss 30 pips, take profit 60 pips. I will click on update. Okay, and then we connect this to this. So basically, 
If there are no trade, it will check the buy condition. If the buy condition is met, it will execute a buy buy now. Otherwise, we should check the sell condition. So let's create the sell condition. So we go back just the same way we did for the buy. We drag this. Remember, you can also copy this and reuse it, but I'm just going to create it in new so that you can get used to it. So we name this to sell condition, right? And what is our sell condition? Double click on that. Our sell condition is if the 10 period moving average, right? If the 10 period exponential moving average plus below the 20 period exponential moving average, we set our candle ID to one. So we'll change this to cross below. And then 20 period exponential moving average, make sure we're looking at candle ID one as well. Okay, so we click on update. So we'll set our cell condition, right? And we drag this to the top as well. So basically, if there are no trees, it will set, it will check the buy condition. Otherwise, it will check, um, if the buy condition are not met, it will check the sell condition. If the buy condition is met, it will buy. Um, if the sell condition is met, we want to sell now. So click on sell, double click here. Um, uh, use I think we use 0 0.2 for that one. Our stop loss will make 30 pips and our take profit will make 60 pips. So one is to two, I will click on update. And then we connect this high, this connector together. So basically, like it or believe it or not, you have built your first EE. We've just built our first EE together. Now, uh, we're going to go and test this EE and see if it does exactly what we're asking it to do. So let me just quickly explain what we just did here. We told just the same thing we, we, we highlighted on our flow charts here, saying if there are no open trades, check the moving averages and execute by yourselves based on if certain conditions are met. Right. So we say if there are no open trade by yourself, check the buy condition. Right. If the buy condition is met, buy now. Otherwise, check the sell condition. If the sell condition is met, sell now. The stop loss and the take profits are added together, and the lot size that's to be used is also included as well. Right. So now this is a very simple EE, but we're going to go and um, test this EE and uh, see how if it's working, if it's doing exactly what we asked it to do. Okay, now in, 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 the next, in the next class, right, in the next um, class, what we're going to do is we're going to take this particular EE and we're going to optimize it, right? So basically, we'll look at it now and we'll see some of the, you know, we're going to now see, okay, how do we make it even better? Okay, so that's what we're going to do in the next class. Now, how do you download your project? Um, just go to, just click on this .mq4 file. You can see it up here. So if you click on .mq4, it will load up your, it will just, basically download this project for you in the .mq4 format, okay? And that's what we want because that's what we need to run on our MT4. Now, if it's MT5, it will be .mq5 as well. So let's, I think I've clicked on that. So let's download it. Okay, it's, now it's coming up. Um, so we're just going to quickly download that. Uh, don't worry, we're going to back test it, right? I'm not just going, the reason, the reason we are, Okay, so you see, we'll save it to where we want to save it. So we'll just save it uh, here. Um, I named it 6th April, that's today. Um, so now we've we'll downloaded that and then we've we'll saved it, okay? Now what we're going to do now is we'll take this EA that we've built and we're going to back test it on the MT4. The goal, what we're looking for is to see that it's doing exactly what we asked it to. I'm not really particular about whether it makes us money, right? I'm more particular about if it does exactly what we access to do or we if, if it's following the logic that we set because that's all you want to do you want to build back test and um, sometimes there'll be error you debug those errors um because from the back testing you see what is not playing out as well and then you can modify those things as well so now it has downloaded so what i'm going to just do is just open up the mt4 okay so i'm just going to quickly open up the mt4 right so um we have an mt4 loaded up here uh so I don't know how many of you know how to use the strategy tester on the MT4. I'm also going to be showing you that as well. Now, what you want to do is copy the file you just downloaded to the MT4 expert folder of your MT4, right? So how do you get that folder? Just go to file, just on your MT4 here, go to file, go to open data folder, right? And then, um, so once that loads up, you'll see MQL4. Right. If it's MT5, you see MQL5. Okay. So um, open data. For, did I click that? I think I did. Where is it? Is 
Okay, so open, let me do that again. I don't know why it's not coming up. So open, just click on file, then go to open data folder. Okay, so this is data folder for our MT4, right? Um, you might have multiple MT4 on your system. So use this way so that you get the exact MT4 for that part that you're looking at. Okay. So MT4 on that, once you this is data folder, let me make this. Uh, so you click on MQL4, right? And then under MQL4, you see lots of folders. The one you're looking for is expert. So click on expert. So this is where just on that expert, this is where you will drop your the file you just downloaded, you can see lots of files of you know different classes that I've tested. So what you want to do is go and find the files. So I'm going to, I think it sends my downloads, go to my download folder. I'm just going to cut the file. That's sixth April class. So I'll just cut it. And then I'll go to just go back, right? And paste it. So I just copy control, control, cuts, control X, and then paste control V. I just paste it there. And then that's it. I'll keep and close this. Now, once you do that. Come to this, your navigator window here, right click on expert advisor and refresh. All right, so right click on expert advisor and refresh. We should now see your EA once it's done. Um, so it's still loading, you can see my mouse rolling. Um, so you should see, so uh, where's that six? So the name is slash it here, six April class, okay? So we have it added to this particular MT4. So what we want to do now is test this EE, right? Now, what I want you to do um, in order for us to test it, we're going to use the strategy tester window. If you don't know how to bring that up on your MT4, just go to view. On that view, you would see strategy tester. Um, just click on that, or you can press Control R. So click on strategy tester, and to bring up the strategy tester window, right? So from this strategy tester window here, we will be able to test this particular strategy on, um, on, the, on the chat. So what we're going to do, leave, you want to definitely, you want to leave this at experts, okay? Then here, we want to select our EA. The EA we just built is 6th April class. I hope you can all see this, okay? So 6th April class, so click on that. And then we're going to test this on Euro USD. Um, we're going to do it, test it within the period of, this is January 2021. So dates, obviously I'm not going to allow it to get to there because it's take a while, but we'll, the goal is we're going to test it and we're going to see how it's taking those streets, okay? And then, um, you know, we'll just set visual, visual modes to highest. Now on that export property, this is where you can modify the parameters, okay? So you can change the uh, moving average period because I tick those boxes. Because we talk, tick those boxes, you can see that we can adjust the moving average periods. If I'd also check the boxes for the stock loss and take profit, you see them here. You can also, you know, adjust them and modify them if you want to, okay? You can also um, modify, you know, adjust the starting balance, the lot size and all of those things, okay? So um, it's fine, we'll just click on okay, okay? Now, um, we're applying it to the one hour chart, we select the time frame here, and then I'll just keep the spread the way it is. And then, so what we'll do is we'll click on start. Okay, now the MT4 will start to populate the data, but what we're going to do while we're waiting for it, we're going to, um, you know, uh, basically set this to visual mode. Let's add our moving averages. So we're going to add our moving averages so that we can see when the crossover is happening and see if the, um, the EA is taking trades based on those crossovers. So I just added the 10 period moving average. You can see it's red. I'm going to add this 20 period moving average. Uh, 20 period exponential moving average, I'm going to make it blue, okay? So we'll make this blue and we'll click on, okay. So you can see we have our 10 period moving average and our 20 period uh, moving average as well. So um, it's still loading, you can see it down here. I don't know if you can see it. You should, see, you should see down here, it's still loading. So once it's done, it should start to move. So what is going to happen is it will be, um, um, price will start to tick as basically plain back price from this period that we set here, right? And then as price is moving, obviously the moving average will also move with it. And then once those crossover happens, we want to see it execute those trades. In the meantime, while we're waiting for this to load, it shouldn't take some time. I hope you're enjoying the class so far. Okay, just quickly um, give me a thumbs up or tell me yes if you're enjoying the class um, so far, okay? Um, so uh, this is almost done. So it should begin anytime soon. Okay, so Innocence is enjoying the class. Chux is also enjoying the class and John is enjoying the class. Okay, now it's loading. So I'm just going to quickly stop this. Let me, uh, it's too fast. Ah. 
Okay, so let me go back. Although I'm going to, this is where it started. Uh, can I, okay, you know what? Let's just go forward. Let's just continue to move, right? So, but what you notice here is this. I don't know if you can see this clearly. Um, I don't know if you can see this clearly. Uh, Mr. Mike, good to see you enjoying the class as well. Um, but you, I don't know if you can see this clearly here as well. You'd see that there was a trade taken here. Don't worry, we'll play it. It will take a live trade, okay? Not live. It will take, you know, as it's going, it's take a trade. Um, but you'd see, I mean, look at this here. Here, there was a trade here. You can see it's a sell trade, right? There's a small red line up here. That's where the stop loss is. And there's a small blue line here. That's where the take profit is. If you measure from here to there, it's 30 pips. And from here to down here, it's 60 pips. So those are our parameters. And then if you check our graph curve here, you can see it took a trade. That trade was a buy. Um, see it here. It took a trade, actually two trades. We had a sell trade that hit profit. We had a buy, another, um, yeah, I think a sell trade that hits profits, just that one trade. Okay, so let's continue to play price. Let's see how it moves. Okay, so let's go back to current price and let's play. So what we're waiting for, remember, based on our parameters, it's going to take a buy. The next trade this thing is going to take is going to be a buy trade when the red a moving average cross be above the blue, right? So the next time this um, happens, so the next time this red one crosses above uh, this blue one, we expect to see a buy trade, okay? So we're looking to see if that is going to be the case. So let's close this and let's continue. Now we're about to cross, we've not yet crossed, okay? So let's see. And now we crossed. Now I post it perfectly. So you can see the trade is open, right? Where did it buy? Or where did, where did it buy in this case? You can see it bought here. Why did it buy there? Now look at the moving average, right? Look at where the red moving average crossed above the blue. It's this candle. It's this particular candle here, right? And then we set it to buy at the open of the next candle, at the, you know, at the close of this candle, which is also the open of the next candle. So you can see why um, we, it's bought where it's bought. Uh, you took a buy where it did, and then automatically you place a stop loss 30 pips below and I'll take profits 60 pips above. So you would agree with me that it is doing exactly what we asked it to do, right? So uh, let's continue to see. Now, does this hit profit or loss? I don't know. Okay, this one goes on to hit profit as well. So you can see we had a buy based on the parameter. It took a place our stop loss with our take profits. We had a buy trade that ended up making profit. The account also increased by that volume. So the account balance is now what? I remember this is simulation. Um, it's now what? It started at 10,000, it's now 10,000 to 50. Now, this, is, this particular system would not probably necessarily make you money in the long term because, well, um, what happens when the market begins to range? Now, but based on this, right? Um, let's see. Based on this, right? We want to, the next trade <clears throat> would have to be a sell trade when the red moving average cross below the blue. And let's see whether that happens. Okay. So you can see that we had a sell trade. Why did it sell? You can also see it. It's very, very clear. It sold at this point. Why? Because at this point here, the red moving average crossed below the blue one. And what candle, what candle did that happen? It as at the close of this candle here, right to so this uh, candle here. At the close of that candle, we had this trade uh, because that was where the moving average crossed over. Please our stop loss 30 pips. Please our take profit 60 pips. Okay, so it is, I think our EA is perfect, right? Perfect, not in the sense that it makes you billions of dollars, but perfect in the sense that it is doing exactly what we have asked it uh, to do, okay? And then let's continue to play price. I'm not going to pause it again. I'm just going to let it run. And so if that one hits stop loss, and let's, you know, you can see it just continues to take trades uh, based on the crossover of the moving averages as price moves its way. So you can see here that we, you know, we have built our first year together, right? Uh, and then, you can actually um, get access to this to be able to test it on your own, um, on your own uh, MT4 for yourself and see how it works. Remember, this is for test purposes only, just for disclaimer. Anzo Capital do not give you EA to trade because we are a broker. Our license only cover 
providing a platform for you to trade. This is for educational purposes so that you can become better yourself. So I'm showing you how to build trade of, of optimization automation for your system, okay? Now, at this point, you can look at this and you see that, oh yeah, there are some flaws in this system, okay? So for instance, at least for one, let me just quickly pause this, okay? For one, uh, let me zoom out a little bit. This EA is kind of a trend-based EA, right? It works best when the market is trending. So in a trending market condition, it's you you want what you want to do is at least capture a good portion of the trend, right? At least. So for instance, in this particular case here, we bought here. Sorry, we look at this here. We where was that? Uh, where was the buy? So it's it took a buy here, right? And Put, so we sell there, put our stake profit there, put our stop loss above there. Again, it took another sell here, right? I think no, it was here. And then, you know, it only ended up taking this much profit, even though price went much this, this way. So what we're going to do in the next class, right? So in the next class, which I'll be having with you guys, is we're going to try and optimize this system so that it will, you know, capture most of the trends. So instead of using... 60 pips take profit or 30 pips stop loss. We're going to allow the market trend and then we're going to use a dynamic stop loss to exit our positions, right? So all trades will be exited on stop loss, to be existed on dynamic stop loss based on, so when the market is trending, as long as the moving averages are still, um, so let's say the, the red moving average plus below or close above the blue, and we start buying, it's going to continue buying until the red moving average crosses below the blue. So you, you understand what I mean by dynamic. So that way, when the market is trending, right, when the market begins to trend, you would stay in the trend and capture most of the profits. So for instance, in this case, instead of using a hard-coded stop loss, you to continue to stay in the trend as long as this moving average, you know, basically remains uh, the way it is, okay? So, and um, it will keep executing trades back and forth so there's either a buy or a sell at every single point in time okay so that's about it for our session for today we have built our first year together and uh we we seem to you know it's it's working exactly as we uh built it so that's very good at least um and uh remember you can get access to this i will be um I will send out the the m the dot mq4 file of this particular project on the telegram channel uh, so you guys can access it so uh, remember, I'm sure you had to, in order to get access to this class, you had to have an account to answer capital. Okay, so um, if you don't have an account or if you've not created an account yet, uh, you won't be able to access um, the, basically the, the EAs and you need to have an account to answer capital and you need to at least fund your account to be able to, for, to join me in the classes where we build the EAs. Um, and build the, um, what they call it, price action EAs as well. Okay, so if you've not done so uh, just quickly if you if I, is anybody here that doesn't have an account to answer just yet yeah so chooks is asking so when is the next class so the next class will be sometime next week probably on wednesday and then if you can fund in naira yes you can fund your account in naira um so the the dollar equivalent will be credited to your mc4 but you can fund with naira you can fund with the dollar um, you can fund with cryptos and um, yeah, you can fund with Skrill and Netella and all. Our exchange rate is 720. So that's 720 both for um, deposits, both for withdrawals. So there's unlike some other platforms. So there are many other platforms, you know, I'm not going to call names where you might deposit at a certain rate. So let's say you deposit at 750, for instance, when you want to withdraw, you would be withdrawing at let's say 740 or something like that, okay? So not with Anzo, there are no charges on, there are no spreads basically, and de withdraw and uh, deposit spreads. Um, so those, those are some of the advantages of trading with us, okay? Uh, now it's time to drop in your questions, uh, if you have any. Okay, yeah, 720, that's our rate. Um, okay, so you will be able to get access of the recording, obviously, once you've, um, if you have an account, I'm sure your client manager reached out to you. So they'll be glad to assist you with that. So if you have created an account, just um, tell them they would, um, they would help you with that. Okay, so the minimum balance or you can fund your account with is $50, okay? So uh, meanwhile, I hope we all enjoyed the class. Quickly, let me know if you did. If you um, just leave a thumbs up or uh, let me know what you feel about.